Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here one more time for Stern Tech Workstation, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. We have two K&K Mini installs today. Now a lot of the guys with the boutique guitars, boy, this is what they're going for now. And everyone is impressed with the results of this type of system. I mean, it's like you've got three little mini stethoscopes picking up two strings at a time. So we're going to show you this install. First of all, we have our, you know, our typical jack that tightens from the outside. I've already adjusted this for the proper depth. Let's go over to the guitar and feed this into place. Here's one more example of a low-tech solution. This is basically a quarter-inch dowel. You get a bag of them at the dollar store for a buck. I feed that through the hole that's already there in the tail block from the last system that was in here. I'm, I'm essentially feeding that like so, right, from the inside of the guitar. So we just push that, index that into the uh, actual input jack. Now for all of the latest Tech Deck owners that ordered their units and have received them recently, I want to take a minute and sort of explain why I'm setting this guitar up the way it's set up. Both guitars, of course, are set up the same way. The uh, Yari guitar is also getting that K&K system. So we'll start off by discussing the body platform. This is a very light guitar, by the way, very delicate. It is not held with clamps. There are no clamps to be seen. So we use either a leather or a canvas strap that's supplied with the Tac Deck when you buy it. And we create a, a hoop that basically catches the lower bout. The body is supported underneath with two leather rails that kind of run on an angle similar to the proportions of the lower bout to the upper bout. That's how the body is held. Up between this upper neck strap velcro and the hoop that I just explained, everything's kind of held in place firmly but gently. What I have here of course is a capo. So when I'm doing this job, I'm doing the same job on both guitars, so I'm taking the same approach. We'll take these bridge pins out I get these snapshot containers at the dollar store. You get about, I think you get eight of them for a buck and a quarter. So that just keeps those pegs together. And I keep them stored here, ready to snap up and go when we need them. This is the trough at the base of the body platform. So same deal for uh, Tom's guitar. We'll loosen those strings off. I kind of pull up on that string as I loosen it off. That does two things. It loosens it on this side of the capo and keeps it tight around the post on this side. So the capo is about the heaviest clamp you'll see me use to hold the guitar. Same deal here with the bridge pins. We kind of pop those out and put store those in our little snapshot container and and drop them into the trough. They'll be there when we need them. So again, we're loosening off this upper neck support strap and just placing three strings on either side of the body. We don't have to worry about wrapping them around the post. That's already taken care of. Yeah, with this guitar, we've got some extra work here. We, you can see the focal point is chased right to the extremity, the outside edge, because he couldn't get this thing to intonate. We're going to remove that pickup. We're going to fill that slot. And we're going to re-slot it further back so we can line up the intonation.
while the glue sets on this insert, we'll continue with the J50 and get that k, &K system installed. So the goal here is to get that disc directly under the saddle and centered between the low E and the A. And I see the little string marks on the tip of the saddle, so that's where we want to be. Well, as you can see, I've kind of wiped off that first X that I made for the first tab because the saddle's on a slant. So you can't use that same mark. You've got to make a new mark. For the camera, I'll mark that there's a fourth string. We want it to be directly underneath the saddle. So I'm making kind of a new centering X now for this next transducer. For all you guys with your tech decks, I actually loosen off this strap that allows me to flip the guitar up on its edge. So the guitar is actually being held firmly, gently, but firmly by the neck. This is the second one now. I hold it for about a count of 60. Make sure that gel is set good and hard. So that's been about 60 seconds. Instead of trying to pry it off the plate, the guide plate, I actually twist it. That should do it. Just pulling the putty off now. That's good. Okay, last one. So this one is a different story again. There is where the center of that disc needs to be directly underneath the first string. So you can see it's kind of on the edge. I have to put a little extra goop on here because it is uh, right on the edge of that plate. That is where we want it. Just checking that to make sure we got that putty. X marks the spot, dead center. Well, we've put that extra strap button, as Brian requested after seeing some of my videos. And the reason for that is the extra strap button is actually used as a strap button only. The input jack is never used as a strap button. So Brian's 9 volt battery days are over forever. It's still amazing how much output these K&K &K systems get without a preamper battery. Okay, we'll tune that up and set it aside and then slot the bridge on that other uh, guitar that's kept in the K&K system. So this is a real time saver. We don't have to reattach those strings to the posts because the cable held them in place as we did the install. When I'm done with the guitar, or if I'm in between tasks, I'll always put this neck strap on and that lower bout hoop. So if I'm walking around the shop, if you give the guitar a knock, it ain't going anywhere. So it's held once again, firmly, safely, no excessive force.
we're all set up and ready to make the cut. I've shown this many times before on the channel, but I will show you again and explain one more time. The guitar is actually held by the neck on the neck assembly, and I do have a strap that goes across that lower bout. But the whole fixture is hand tightened. Just enough pressure to hold it in place. All of the tension is at the kerfing joint where the top meets the sides. Tightened, so no danger of crushing or cracking. And this is the clear plexiglass plate that is a copy of the Bosch Cold router. This is the end of the cut on this side. This is the end of the cut on that side. We're ready to flick the switch and make the cut. I like to start by just getting that cutter to just kiss that masking tape and then I adjust the depth of cut from there. And that will do it. So I now actually have gotten into the habit of sticking those hockey puck pieces on the underside of the plate with two-sided tape. So now that the guitar is held firmly in place by the body, now I have complete access to the edge of the fingerboard to fill the ends and do the final touch-up on the edge dress. So I have a bevel on the edge of that tongue depressor and that allows me to get in good and tight. And of course I've got another tongue depressor here to protect the soundboard as I do this. This is the dark overspray from the heel. I'm just going to sand that out so that we get a consistency along the edge of the fingerboard. Much better.
600 again. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over, but I don't want this fresh finish to touch the neck assembly. So mask along that glue line of the fingerboard. That beveled edge allows me to get right in tight and expose those voids underneath the fret ends. Here we go again, a very light, quick brush with the 80 grit, just to get all that real craggy stuff down. Follow that up with 120. We are down to the nitty gritty. So I decided to go with a solid bone saddle on Brian's guitar. I feel the bone saddles work better with the K and K system. All of those values that I've discussed in so many other videos, it's all been done. The final thing now is to scrape across the focal point on each string and reduce this 8 cents to zero. And you can see 11 cents on the A. Lots of room to come back, lots of room to go down. So it'll be two adjustments, lengthening the string slightly and lowering the string slightly. Now I'm going to go right across all six focal points and then I'll take another measurement and we'll come right back. We've 
arrived. Well, here we go. Here's this J50. Before I plug it in, I just wanted you to hear this acoustically. Let's plug it in. So this is just straight into my lab series. Semi twenty five. So you can hear a bit of flange on there. on his way in to pick it up so I just wanted to at least plug it in and let you hear it so you can hear this uh, K&K system. Now of course Tom's guitar also has that K&K system. With this guitar it's not just about the system obviously the guitar itself. A beautiful sounding guitar. 